that annoying person did not find us. Whoever was looking for us before we Sila took the break. Fisher. Yeah, she didn't find us. Gloria. Well, we're back. It's a stage five clinger. It is a stage five clinger. You don't Lock want that up. virgin clinger. I don't think you understand what I said. <laughs> that was my first Asian. All right. Well, you can, <laughs> you can join the discussion at the FF Dynasty. Uh, we're going to keep this right on rolling through. One of the biggest discrepancies we kind of first rolled up on in the actual ADP, as opposed to talking about just kind of a couple of guys sliding a point or two here, uh, was Christian McCaffrey being up from 23 to 19 with the addition of C.J. Anderson. And not only that, surprising, you have Melvin Gordon kind of he was at 24 uh, came up to 22 so still a few spots behind christian mccaffrey and i I know that me and big co at least have a problem taking christian mccaffrey over melvin gordon i I don't know if you how you feel about it jay wayne yeah i can i'll go melvin gordon i mean he's just getting fed the ball like he can't like he can't handle all the carries almost that he's getting and then he's crushing in the passing game right i mean there's no chance that christian mccaffrey is gonna have the amount of volume put in his gut and be anywhere near as effective. Obviously, Melvin Gordon, you can look at it and say, well, you know, he's not the most effective runner. He's a volume-based runner. and he gets his carry. The, the Chargers offensive line hadn't been healthy for a season since Melvin Gordon's been over there. For if, if three he could weeks just, in right, a row. If he could just get that, that same unit to be out there for most of the season, yeah. we could see what Melvin Gordon can do. And he still produces at an RB1 level for most of the years that he's been in there. And then you add on top of that the, you know, 50 some catches that I think he had last year. Sure. And they've, they obviously just got the young, awesome tight end is hurt and that's terrible. But at this point, if Keenan Allen can make it to the season healthy and be healthy again for the season, and they've got the, the second year monster, Mike Mike Williams from, from Clemson and they got Tyrell Williams. They got some weapons. Still paying Travis. They got as, they got as much, they got as much, of a offensive weaponry situation as they've ever had with Melvin Gordon out there to take pressure off of him. And like you, Casey mentioned, the offensive line just been falling around like flies there for years. And, and we really did, the whole team's been getting injured, but sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and they got a really good, they got a really good secondary and they got some joy Bosa and, 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 and Ingram. They Melvin got a Ingram great over defense. There. They got really, general. really solid. They have defense. all the pieces that you want on a defense. Sick up. In 2016, Melvin Gordon's second year in the league has come to life party. He got 250 carries, 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns, 40 catches, 400 yards, two touchdowns. 2017, 280 carries, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns, 58 catches last year, 476 yards, four more touchdowns. This guy is – call him a compiler, call him a stack em up call him whatever you call him. Call him – an RB1 in my lineup. Call That's him, what I'm calling. Call him one of the best, like, 18, 19 points a game. Right. Outside of those top five or six, nobody's doing it as well as Melvin Gordon. He's completely disrespected. And I've said it on – we said it last year to package him up and ship him off while before he gets hurt at a high-end rate. Like, don't sell yeah. him cheap. Just sell him for a ton because he's he was killing it. And maybe, you know, yeah, he's got skinny legs and maybe some, you know, bone on bone in his knee. But right <laughs> now, his volume is ridiculous. And – and that's and, and he's real good in the passing game. Christian fifty eight catches last season. That's what I'm talking saying. about. Getting him more, right? Christian McCaffrey. This man had eleven hundred yards. Christian McCaffrey had four hundred thirty yards rushing last year. Two touchdowns, eighty catches for sure. At the eighty catches and six hundred fifty yards and five touchdowns makes him a back end RB one. But the difference between the back end of the RB one and the front end of the RB one is like having another player in your lineup. Yeah, you know. And Melvin Gordon. There's a. There's a. There's a. There's a basically there's a wide receiver three or a, or a running back three for free in your lineup in that spot on top in, of the RB one. In addition, you. yeah, in addition to if you plug it in Melvin Gordon every week versus Christian McCaffrey, and obviously from one week to another week, but then give it the season a whole. Melvin Gordon is going to be like you threw another an extra little crappy guy on top of him for free in your lineup, and you started an extra player. That's the difference in that volume that Melvin Gordon gets. I love Christian McCaffrey. Just Casey and I did a whole. 45 minutes on Christian McCaffrey, but his value is just inflated. Yes, there's a safety factor there. Yes, he's super young. Yes, he's awesome, and and I love him it's too. Three years younger, but than Melvin, I can't so. get on board. But st- but yeah, what? Yeah, because right, so, he's 22. But Melvin's only 25, and not, what, yeah. th- before it even matters, it's going to take four years before the age matters. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah the age. I, if the age is there, is what's making that difference be. Doesn't matter. A couple of spots, like it doesn't matter. Like I, I, I'm trying to win right now. We've obviously you can say that there's a bunch of targets to be had in um, 
uh, San Diego, not San Diego, L.A. There's a bunch oh, of targets yeah. to be had by all the all the players out there. So kind of what we were talking about with Christian McCaffrey, how maybe he doesn't even see as many targets as he saw last year. Like Melvin Gordon, there's there's players out there to keep from him, but. 50 targets or 50 catches, I think, is is what you will absolutely see from Melvin Gordon. Plus, yeah. you're going to get 280 balls or whatever it was in his gut, plus a bunch of goal line work, right. which Christian McCaffrey is getting none of that, and he's no. still going to catch you know, at least 50% of the amount of balls that Christian McCaffrey... And it might be closer at the end of the year to, so to like a 70 or 80% yeah. because of there's maybe some targets, more targets being spread out in Carolina than there was last year, exactly. and he doesn't have the actual running back balls in the gut to to fall back on those carries that you got that you got to have to make you that upper end wide receiver uh, rb1 not to mention cam taking everything on the goal line exactly and like yeah because or cj anderson so i just i cannot get behind taking mccaffrey over melvin gordon I'm, i can't do I'm, it I'm, i think this is a i think you're giving up points a staff every pick week. you're we're get, all you're, all you're, ba- you're based you're giving away <laughs> you're giving away an average of six to seven points a week right just because for some reason somebody's out there calling him a compiler and he needs this and that i don't care give a shit what he's doing he's scoring points ppr points right by the dozens i'm much more worried with christian mccaffrey in my lineup a week. Every week. Baker's dozen. Much more worried and a half, 18 19 points a week versus 13 i'm much more worried with christian mccaffrey in my lineup every week than i am with melvin gordon yeah and that's that's the biggest difference here is again yes christian Chargers McCaffrey offense stays healthy they're gonna score way more points in the carolina not offense. all rb ones are created equal there's a huge drop off if you just go to your to your league and and hit the scoring and look at the points, total points, points per game, points per game from the our top two or three running backs, four, five, six running backs to that eight, nine, ten, and that 10, 11, 12. Yes, that tw- 12th or 11th running back is considered an RB1, but look at your weekly point total difference, and yeah. there's a player in there, right? an and extra player to be had. And there's there seems to be a large influx in – running back and running back talent and people selecting the running back position. Yeah. Um, so you have to kind of, obviously a couple of years ago, like you were talking about, Oh, I don't recognize my teams or whatever, whether it was because you traded people or because your just strategy may have changed a little bit. Like, cause nobody was drafting running backs three years ago because it was all zero RB. So you could sit there and rake in the running backs. Now mm-hmm. there's been an influx of running backs coming in that seem to be, they just had a great rookie year and they seem to be on the up and there was a little bit of a changing of a guard and you have these top guys who have been the top guys now for a little while. They replaced some other guys. McCoy's still hanging around, but I guess what I'm saying is, is like it's starting. There, there are starting to be more running backs. Get got the the theory of not drafting running backs anymore is oh, pretty much gone. out the window. Oh, and everybody's drafting running yeah, backs now for sure. So well, and, like and, you said, having that one RB one and being a little bit better than the other bottom end RB one or top end RB two is an advantage. It's a huge advantage. And, and to average and eighteen let's, over let's 13. double let's double down on that advantage because if you're getting Melvin Gordon towards the end of the second round, guess what you're able to do? You're going to put Melvin Gordon on the team with Le'Veon Bell or Ezekiel Elliott or David Johnson if you took him at the beginning of the first. So if you take if Melvin Gordon is your second best running back, you're going to be so hard to beat. Right, so hard to beat. And if because you're at the end of the second round there, that be means you'll be at the beginning of the third, and you can have you can take Le'Veon Bell or David Johnson and throw Melvin Gordon in there at the end of the second and at the beginning of the third. You know, grab a Stephon Diggs or even just hit it out of the park and grab Devontae Freeman, who's undervalued, and now you got your flex position filled out already and a backup for your RB2 if something happens. I don't even think you've seen the best Melvin Gordon either. I don't think he's even had a fair shake to be. I love that. Nobody said that. To be as good as he can be because of the injuries and all that other stuff that's been around him. I mean, there's a reason that he was getting 3.5 yards per carry is because people, he was getting, he's an explosive man and he was getting tackled in the backfield half the time. Right. If you have 3.5 yards per carry, you're not good. Mm-hmm. How could you be? Yeah. And I'm not saying that you're not going to see great growth from Christian McCaffrey. I just don't know if he'll ever be where Melvin Gordon is on the spectrum of workload and doing what Melvin Gordon's already done year after year. Mark, 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 mark my words while we're on the topic. If you can get that first running back all in the top of the first round and you get Melvin Gordon at the end of the second round and you get Devontae Freeman at the beginning of the third round and then you get your Marvin Joneses and your Robert Woods and then you finish out with some, you know, a Larry Marquee Fitzgerald Street. or like well, yeah, and then like at the you, bottom of this you, thing, you can you can throw on throw on catches. Marquis Lee's and John Browns and, and a late Quincy round and a late, and late quarterback and stabs you, on these receivers. One of them's going to pan out, killing them, killing them. Right. All right. Well, I think that's that was kind of the the first thing that jumped out to all of us was that McCaffrey over Gordon thing, and we thought that that needed to be talked rectified. about. <laughs> rectified. Rectified. <laughs> 
Um, I think then the next thing is, I guess, Melvin Gordon, not Melvin Gordon. Joe Mixon was at 30 when we did this last in February. He's up to 23 this season. I thought that, you know, we could have an interesting discussion there, whether or not he was worth that. Has he earned that spot for you to take the swing on him right there for you guys? Or are you just still kind of being like, that's a little too early for me to put my eggs in that basket? I'm, st- I'm, tr- I'm still trying to hit at least a double. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is uh, you don't want to strike out here at 23. I mean, he he looked when he got his chances. You know, I was watching up some cut ups from I think it was week 14 and week 17 or something. Week 14 versus the Browns. He looked unstoppable. Every time he touched the ball, it was five to ten yards and he was mauling dudes over. Right. He was he was he looked smart. He was chipping guys in the screen game to give his quarterback a little bit of time. Made every catch look super smooth. It was just jets up the field. He looks shot out of a cannon. He's got all the tools. He's big, fast, strong. He shows a little bit of patience. He's decisive. It's yeah. it's it was awesome to watch. But uh, twenty three, it's just a, it's probably a little bit like I, I. I mean, I'd have to take like Stephon Diggs or Devontae Freeman still. I think over Joe Mixon, even though this dude's twenty one. And he's big and fast and he's, strong, and, and could t- take this whole Bengals offense on his a, back. He's a five. What are they? What is? What's the baseball when you got all the five, five tool, tool player? Five, 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 five tool, tool player. player. He's got the potential to be a really solid five tool player, and that's what you're swinging on right now. Well, right. we called him the one one talent in the rookie rookie mock last year. Joe Mixon's got me perplexed because I, I, think, I was talking I, to Casey. He obviously about, has everyone perplexed because look where he's at. I was well, and up here he's he's got some people feeling real good about him. I, I, feel, I just what Jason said. I completely. There was times when Joe Mixon was getting hated on last year, and I was I would be I would be over here watching football on Sunday and be like, "Do you guys not see how good this right. guy is?" Their Every time he touches the terrible. ball, the Bengals were horrible. They that was the just, big question. Just last Just like year. a Melvin Gordon situation, they, the yeah. offense line is trashy. Right. Offense, right. And, and you don't have Philip Rivers. You got Andy Dalton, who's not quite the gunslinger. Well, and you know? every every podcast I listened to last year before the season started, that Evan Silva and them boys were just like the Giants and the Bengals are going into this year and they're just throwing talent out there on offense and the skill positions and they're going to see if it doesn't matter that their offensive line is trash. Right. And guess what? They had the two worst offensive lines, two out of the three or four worst off, and it didn't work. And they were getting just pummeled in the backfield. Everything, everything they did. And and what happened this year? This year, the Giants and the Bengals immediately dressed the offensive line because they were like bad job took some that, shots at it at that least. Did, yeah well exactly they, they tried i mean right. you know they tried they tried hard well, another thing for joe mixon is that it seemed like marvin lewis was trying to hold him back they were plot they were they were sending jeremy hill out there on you know starting the game and, and right giving he didn't him get carries. a full opportunity to no. get out there and be the guy from from the get right and i don't know if that's because he's a rookie i don't know if that's because they they have he, he's got those off the field issues coming out of college and they're trying to keep him grounded and humbled i mean anytime he did break off a, a nice run he was all going buck wild beating his chest feeding himself scored some touchdowns didn't oh, want joe to celebrate Mixon definitely feels his, himself there's no doubt about mm-hmm. that won't mm-hmm. celebrate with his teammates i don't like that but i mean he looks awesome from a running back standpoint i but I mean, twenty three is just a little bit much, right? I mean, like, well, just a little you, bit, I guess, right? I guess for me, I think there's depending. I, you don't know how Geo is going to get used. I feel like Geo is always perennially disrespected. Correct. I think he's a great player, correct? And the PPR for for Geo could be really good, but it's if the if there can just be some PPR floor for. Joe Mixon, if he can just catch a couple of balls, he you'll got feel, it though. You'll, so you've, you've at least hit a single or a, or a single or maybe a, a sliding in double with Joe Mixon at this pick here. If he can catch a couple of balls and still get the chances to carry 15, 20 times a game, because there is a lot of talent there. But if you're going to say that I'm an, just like you were talking earlier, Jason, this mock draft is whatever. And, and it's a, you can take Joe Mixon at 23 or whatever. And it's whatever. It doesn't really count. But you put a two hundred fifty dollar league on the line, and at twenty three, I need to I need to at least get, know that I'm about to score. I'm gonna score points out of this position. Right. You could it's get really you, hard to, for me to pull the trigger on at Joe Mixon Freeman right there. Yeah, well, it's really yeah, it's really hard for me to pull the trigger on a guy like kind of like what you were saying. You know, it's tough right there to pull that trigger. But you're swinging for the fences. You're just yeah. praying to God you could at least hit a single with Joe Mixon. I mean, this dude did catch 30 balls on a, on a less than 50% snap share, so... Good call. And, well, let's... Uh, Casey mentioned it's the same... Like, Melvin Gordon got killed his rookie year, didn't score any touchdowns, terrible offensive line, and Joe Mixon set up the same way last year. And after Melvin Gordon's rookie year, he was a high-end rookie draft pick, and he did... And he t- 
disappointed, okay? And then he fell into the fifth round ADP of a dynasty startup the next year. That's what I was, when I was telling Casey about this, I was like, I just don't get this draft position right this second for Joe Mixon because when Melvin Gordon disappointed in similar, very, very, very similar fashion after his rookie season, he was a fifth round startup pick. And now you're asking me to take Joe Mixon at the end of the second, early third to to take a swing on it. And it for Melvin, it turned out just fine. He jumped right back up there with a good year. I, I think kind of maybe part of that reason right there is because of what we, I talked about a minute ago with the trend at the time with Melvin Gordon being that I can find a running back wherever you want to go. So the running backs were kind of sliding down the draft board some. Right now, you just saw a bunch of rookies do well and everyone's drafting running backs. So by proxy, and this was a guy who people had a lot of stock in, sure. by proxy, he kind of stays with with some stronger value rather than probably should be slid back a, you know, a round or two. Well, just into... It, it, Jason just mentioned that he only got he got less than a 50 percent snap share which only ended up giving him 178 carries last year and obviously a bad yards per carry because it was a horrible offense and horrible offensive line it's and they tough just to carry when there's three guys in the back they didn't do right it's tough to get a nobody's to get five yards when somebody's on AJ your Green's ankle. out by the time I think he was in there playing right so but he but only but in that limited snap share his talent and his abilities and his skill set shows up because he still got 30 catches on a limited, limited snap share. And and I these numbers mean absolutely zero, but I put them together to have some fun with this. At at a at a carry per catch rate, 178 divided by 30 is 5.9, right? So at, for every six carries, he got a catch. Le'Veon Bell's rookie year. He had 244 carries, which is a lot more snap share, but he had 45 catches in similar attributes. I'm not saying Joe Mixon's going to be Le'Veon Bell, be Le'Veon Bell, but right. there was times last year when Joe Mixon was on the field when I was like, he looks like Le'Veon well, Bell. Because hey, he's, he's got that similar upright and a lot and some patience, and that's yeah, what yeah. happens when you look like that. Foot, yeah. And when he gone. decides to go, he shot yeah. out of a cannon. So that's what. I, so Le'Veon's run, carries per catch as a rookie was 5.2. He had 244 carries divided by 45 catches is 5.42. Let Mixon's was 5.9, like I mentioned. And in the, the next year, Le'Veon's breakout sophomore year, that, that carries per catch went down to three and a half, but he had almost 300 carries and 83 catches, and he was probably top five running back, and he hasn't looked back since, save for a couple of injuries. So what I'm trying to say is Mixon, in a very limited snap share, like Jay Wayne pointed out, got 30 carry, 30 catches, which will give you what Jay, Casey's saying he needs to at least – He's still he's right here in the same exact conversation that he's one pick behind Melvin Gordon and Christian McCaffrey's going ahead of him. Like if he just gets forty five catches that next year, he's gonna be a high end RB two, low end RB one because he's gonna get carries and some touchdowns. Like if it doesn't take much for him to give, yeah. as bad as it That's looks, and as much I'm with Jay Wayne. If I if I had a bunch of money on it, I'd probably have to grab Devontae Freeman because he's proven. But if you're swinging for defense. Joe Mixon, and if he slips at all, and some if somebody you know if he falls down into if he can be your third player, I think that's a that great makes it feel position. a lot better. If, oh, yeah, a lot better if he can be my third better. player instead of my second player. Right. But not a whole lot has to absolutely break his way no, for no, him no. to repay. Yeah, he's going to get his shot. This he, yeah, year. he's going to get that shot. Geo does have. Geo does say, "Hey, look at me. I'm a proven NFL running back, and I've been really, really good at in spots, but not for like workhorse sixteen games in a row right, type but thing." Could, could limit some of the p- big PPR upside for him. No doubt about it. Early in the season, especially like two minute drill. We fell behind. Yeah, we got I think some he's going to be so effective with the ball in his hand. He, there could be. You it know. wouldn't surprise me at all if early in the season, and if the Bengals were getting beat early in a game, or the the two minute drills and the you know third and longs, Geo was in there dominating those snaps. But Mixon, I believe that it it wouldn't take a lot for him to repay you on even on this ADP. Yeah, I mean, I'm certainly not discounting Mixon's talent and what he can do, and it, he's. It's just scary looking. Um, yeah, it's high. scary and it's, and it's real high. I think There's nobody else on this list this high that has done less. Let's right. just put it like that. Everybody else has earned this spot and Mixon, even though he could be quickly being like, dang, I wish I'd have taken him in the early second round like, or late first. For instance, Derrick Henry's down, was at 33. He's, he's slid to 47 since February, since we did this last. Like That's where I would expect Joe Mixon to more so be. That's what like, I'm with saying. It, there's a whole bunch of round. upside with, with Henry, and you've seen him do at least a little bit more in the NFL. It just feels like maybe it should be a little But Like you said, if he does slide a little bit, uh, you, you got to be all over it. He's more of a guy who 
if I'm not in a startup, I'm looking to go trade for. Like I feel a lot more comfortable trading things away to try to get a Joe Mixon than taking him in my startup. Agreed. Think. Especially if he's got to be your second best guy. And obviously, I know what you're trying. You're trying to make an example out of out of uh, the running back for the Titans there. But we would you would much much rather have Joe Mixon than um, Derrick Henry, I assume, right? I mean, I, I suppose so. But what I'm, I'm just saying, like as far as like what they've done on on the field and being like a, an upper echelon kind of talent when you drafted uh derrick henry he was probably in your top five running backs getting drafted yeah in the rookie true. draft or whatever i'm just saying like they're kind of similar like haven't really proven anything could be in line to be really good and have a workhorse role and crush it but i mean mixon's obviously you could say he's the there's more athletically a, gifted guy or whatever so but much he's more. just he's there's 20 but uh, not 20 plus spots in between those two guys. I think that that was that. I think that's just hinging on the catch up side that Mixon yeah. has. You know that Derrick Henry sure. won't give you plus Deion Lewis. Right. All right. Well, let's go to break. Let's do it. <laughs> 